What's up guys? Today we are going to do a review of the KitchenAid stand mixer. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, I am not getting paid to review this or any of the stuff that are featured on my channel. I just review only the stuff that I use. Wait, so before we go on with the review, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and it, you can support the channel by subscribing. It will really help our channel a lot. We will try to do this every week. Uh, again, only the stuff that I use. So, let's get started. The KitchenAid mixer has gained notoriety for producing heavy-duty mixers that are all-in-one. So, this, these mixers can chop veggies, grind meat, uh, knead your pizza dough, make ice cream, and of course, mix other ingredients. These mixers come into two variants, um, the bow lift model, which is similar to the one that I have right here, and the tilt head model. I prefer the bow lift model because according to KitchenAid, um, it's heavy duty. Yep. <laughs> but uh, I've seen videos of other chefs using the tilt head model with no issue so I guess I just want to buy the ones that are advertised by, by the manufacturer as heavy duty so what's the difference between the bow lift model and the tilt head model so basically the bow lift model has a lever on the side of the KitchenAid that allows you to lift the mon the bowl <clears throat> towards the um, the shaft or the beater shaft where you connect your beater attachments. While the the tilted model has uh, a means to lift this whole head away from the bowl. So again, depending on on what you would use it for, use it for what it is. Anyway, the price is expensive um, compared to other stand mixers, especially outside the US. Uh, here in the Philippines, it's around $500 for the bow lift model and around $400 for the tilt head model. So, let's go on and discuss how to use the thing. Okay, so first, we will discuss the different parts of the KitchenAid mixer. So, this is going to be your motor head. The actual motor that runs the whole thing is inside this uh, casing right here. Up front is your attachment hub. All the attachments that are used for KitchenAid mixers are going to be inserted from this hole right here. And then you also have the attachment screw that locks whatever attachment you put inside in place. This is called your uh, bowl support. Uh, this holds your bowl up or down. Uh, it also holds your bowl in place on either end. Of the bowl support are your locating pins so this guides the bowl into its proper position and then back here is the uh, uh, what you call this uh, a bowl lock spring that uh, keeps your bowl in place uh, on one side you also have the the uh, bowl lift lever so when you when you put it down the bowl the, the bowl support goes down if you pull it up and lock it into place the bowl goes up towards the shaft or in the, the beater shaft the beater shaft is what uh, makes the whole uh, beater uh, turn so it holds three different kinds of beater later uh, we will discuss each one of them so it has a beater uh, shaft pin 
that uh, enables you to lock uh, the different kinds of beaters in place. On the other end of the KitchenAid, you have the speed adjustment lever. So it has 10 speeds and you adjust it accordingly depending on what you're going to use the KitchenAid for. And basically, that's it. This is our 5-quart KitchenAid bowl. So it has a bowl pin uh, and it has uh, holes on either end of the bowl. And we will be attaching this to our KitchenAid mixer. Okay, so to do that, you have to align the bowl pin against the spring and each hole to the locating pins. So, just put the, insert the holes on each pin and then now that the bowl's aligned, all you need to do is to push that so that it locks into place. Okay. Once that's done, then your bowl is ready to use. To remove the bowl, Make sure your lever is down um, and then using the handle provided with the bowl, gently lift the bowl up and that's it. Your KitchenAid comes with three beaters, the wire whip, the flat beater and the dough hook the wire whip is used when you need air incorporated with your mixture uh, the egg the uh, sorry the flat beater is used uh, to mix your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients together the dough hook is used as a kneading tool to make your dough nice and firm and now, uh, we will be trying to attach one of them, let's say, your dough hook to our KitchenAid. So how do you do that? So if you notice, there's a hole right here that looks like a keyhole. And you insert it to the shaft right here. You insert the shaft inside that keyhole. And then... You see here that pin let's try to focus okay so that pin is going to go out like that and you need it you need to align it right there to lock it into place and there you have it your attachment I mean your beater is now attached to your kitchen aid so all you need to do now when you're doing uh, when you're gonna use it you have to lift the bowl lock it into place and then turn it on in removing any attachment first you have to make sure that your speed lever is at zero me as a safety precaution I always remove the plug first to make sure it doesn't get accidentally turned on and then once that's done you have to uh, pull down the lever so that the bowl goes down and then once it's down uh, you can remove the attachment so to remove the I mean you can remove the beater so to remove the beater you just have to do it in reverse on how you do it, how you attached it so lift it up align it back to the key and then let it down and there you have it
Okay, so let's give our verdict on this one. Starting with the things that we don't like. So number one, the kitchen aid is expensive. Um, outside of the US, uh, you could argue that you could buy similar equipment for a much cheaper cost. Especially here in the Philippines where there's a lot of uh, China, made in China brands. So it depends on how often you're going to use it and what you're going to use it for. It's really going to be an investment on your end if you decide to go this route. Number two is the weight. So uh, according to KitchenAid, uh, this thing weighs around 22 pounds without the attachment. So it's just the mixer with the bowl and the hook. So whatever uh, beater you're gonna put, so that's around 22 pounds. So you could just imagine how heavy it is and so so you have to take into consideration where in the kitchen you're gonna put it so that you don't move it around all the time. Otherwise, it's really gonna take a toll on you. Um, uh, on, on a positive note, uh, the kitchen aid is really heavy duty. Uh, the mixer itself and its attachments, you can see that it's really uh, well built. There are no uh, flimsy parts that could break easily. Uh, so it's one of those equipments that you could really pass on to your grandkids someday. Uh, also, considering the, the huge number of attachments that you could put on to this, so there's a pasta maker, there's a grinder, uh, there's a, what you call this, there's the, the ice cream maker also. So uh, the attachments we will, we will review separately on a different video. Uh, but just the same, those attachments are really well built so far. We'll get into that in better detail once we go to that uh, review. But anyway, so that wraps up our review for this one. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys soon.